What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Fantasy Football Friendly. It's your boy, Run Boys Robbie. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and share the content. All right, share the content. Last night was dope. We had Run Boys after dark. Greatly appreciate everyone that pulled up to the live stream. You guys got to tune into those live streams. As soon as season kicks off, you're going to see a lot of live content coming to you. Um, speaking of live content, get ready for Goal Line Goons. We are going to be getting that started up, getting that show brought back to you on Tuesdays. That'll be both here on the Run Boys Fantasy Network and as well as uh, Big Guy Fantasy Sports. So make sure you guys tune in. Get with it. It's going to be Liddy. Yo. Shout out to GLD, Rock of the Dodgers chain, you know, get your GLD just like me. Link down below in the description. You already know the vibes. Let's go. We are going to get right into it. We're going to get right into it here on Fantasy Football Friendly, the show where uh, we sit back, we look at all the skill positions per team, and then we sit back and we grade how Fantasy Football Friendly that team may or may not be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to get into it. Um, let's start first off. We got we got to get the banner up, right? We got we got to get the banner up. We got to make sure that people know what show it is. Bow. Let's get it, baby. Tua, ladies and gentlemen, 212, 4.1 million contract extension. Get paid, bro. Get paid. You know what? We got to do it. Cheers to me. Cheers to you. All the raw boys and girls. What to do. Dilly dilly to Tua. Get in the bag. Get paid, brother. I love seeing it. 53.1 million per year. Now, I know a lot of people are like, well, hey, you know, three, 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 He help you need time to get right. The man is good. He's healthy. All right. Stop with the concussion talk. Stop wishing that on this man. I understand that it's a concern. But you know what? You know who's not concerned? You know who's not concerned? The Miami Dolphins. If the Miami Dolphins are concerned, I'm not going to be concerned. Whether or not the contract is worth it or not, look, he was next in line. You're not going to sit here and tell me that Miami wasn't going to gonna pay him and then possibly let him walk next year or try and figure this thing out next year and then possibly go and draft like Carson Beck or Quentin Ewers and then those guys were going to start over. This Miami team is the best Miami team that they've been in a really long time. This is the best Miami Dolphins team that they've been in a really, really long time. It's a long season. I get that down the stretch, you know, a lot of fantasy managers out there were maybe a little bit frustrated with Tua. Consensus has him as QB 13, as you see. He finishes QB 9 last year. Two quarterback format, which is usually what we play a lot here on the Run Boys Fantasy Network. Which, by the way, if you want to get into a Run Boys league, DM me on Twitter at Run Boys Robbie. Get you into a league if you want to compete against the Run Boys. Uh, just drop a comment below as well. We can, you know, work work that way uh, as well. Two have finished QB nine last season. In two QB formats, if I compare Tua with also the right QB2 and then have, you know, and, and construct the roster in a way and in a manner to where maybe I go Tyreek Hill, you know, first round, wrap back around second round, and that's where I grab two of maybe I reach little, you know, depends on how the quarterback situation falls. But a two of Tyreek stack in that format is super equitable and you can do it. And I don't mind running – Tua as a QB1 
and having the roster constructed in a manner to where I can still go out there and I can get a fantasy championship. I do believe that Tua is a fantasy championship caliber quarterback. Whether or not he gets the Dolphins to the Super Bowl or not, that's neither here or there. All right? I'm all in on Tua. The Dolphins ain't worried. I'm not worried. Over the first eight weeks of the 2023 season, Tua was QB5 in fantasy scoring, averaging 302 passing yards, 2.3 TDs per game. I mean, I remind you that um, they – I get, I, I get that it was the Broncos, but it's still a damn NFL team, and they put up 70 on, on, on the Broncos now. You know, just throwing that out there. Producing more than 20 fantasy points four times, all right? Four different times throughout the season. From week nine on, Tua was QB 20 in fantasy scoring, averaging 245.3 passing yards and 1.2 uh, touchdown passes per game. That part is concerning. Another thing when we're looking at Dolphins and we're looking at – Dolphins are a team where you really got to analyze schedule and look at who they face down the stretch because November, December time frame, when it starts getting cold, Tua don't do too well in, in, in the cold. All right, so that's something that you do want to keep in mind as well. But, hell, as long as Mike McDaniel's calling the plays, psh, I'm with it. Y'all want to talk about some speed? Let's get in. Let's get into talking about the speed on this team. Cheers to me. Cheers to you, all the wrong boys and girls. What to do? Dilly dilly. Like, comment, subscribe, share the content. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. The Miami Dolphins offense is the definition of speed kills. Okay, they are the definition of speed kills, and it starts. You, you would think that it starts with Cheetah, with Tyree Kill. Nah, here on Fantasy Football Friendly, we're going to work from the backfield, and then we're going to get into those dangerous pass catchers as well. Devon and Chan, uh, or, I'm sorry, Devon A. Chan, all right, not A. Chan, A. Chan, was a monster last year when healthy. Is Miami going to run a running back by committee? Or is Chan going to get more than 50% of the snaps? In eight games that he played last year, he played at least 41% of the snaps. It averaged 14.2 touches and 113.8 total yards. I... I love that efficiency. The way that I'm approaching this Miami backfield, all right, we might as well just talk about th these two in tandem, I, I guess, in, in, in a sense. This, this team could possibly have two top 15 backs. A Chan could very well finish top eight running backs. This year, RB ten with the RB eight RB ten right now per ADP with an R with the RB eight finish. Hell, even maybe possibly an RB six if he can stay healthy the full season. It's fucking dangerous. It's dangerous. So damn good last year, ranking first in explosive run rate, third in missed tackles force per per attempt, and second in yards after contact per attempt. The, the problem is, is that he has to be able to hold off the backs behind him. Raheem, Mer Raheem Mostert, who right now is ADP in PPR formats, is RB29. Finished last year as RB5 in PPR. Full point PPR. That is dangerous. The way that I look at these two running backs is you can draft either or and be okay because I feel like that with the opportunities that are given, let's say that, that it is a 50-50 share for the most part between these two, which is healthy for this team, I feel. 
Both are going to make the most of their touches to where I feel like there's ROI with both of these running backs. You're going to get good return on investment on both these backs. Mostert in 15 games finished with 234 touches, damn near 1,200 total yards. Bro, like, come on. Put, like, come on. They're going this because of the big playability of what this passing game does. You're going to find a chain in Mostert. In goal line situations where they're just going to be able to get go ahead touchdowns. This offense is built to manufacture points because of how quick they can get on the board and score points. That correlates to fantasy points, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, finished 17th in yards per touch, six in explosive run rate. 11th in miss in, in miss tackles forced per attempt. This is a nasty one-two punch. This is thunder and lightning when we talk about a Chan and Moster. I'm confident in drafting either or, and I'm confident in getting RB1 high, high, high in RB2 upside from either one. I could see how I was saying that a chance could finish top 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 eight running backs. Moser could be could finish RB15 with them splitting carries if both of them are healthy a full season. And if anything happens to either one, and if one or the other is still standing, then they're just going to gobble up the attempts like Moser did last year. Also, most are one of the fastest players in the NFL. Next to Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill, Cheetah. When your name, when your name is after the fastest animal in the jungle, the fastest animal in the savanna, like. You already know what it is. You you already know that it's that, that, that it's demon time. You already know the vibes. Tyree probably had his best season last year, literally cementing him as a first ballot Hall of Famer. Tyree Hill is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. If there is a fantasy football Hall of Fame, Tyree Hill is getting into the fantasy football Hall of Fame right next to the Randy Mosses. And the likes. Career highs in targets, 171. Receiving yards, 1,799. One more would have had a solid 1,800, right? You know? Shit, but just, just give it to him, NFL. Fantasy points per game, 23.5. Wide receiver, two. Like efficiency, he was first in target share, 31.1. Second in air yard share, 42.2%. First in yards per route ran, 4.05. First downs per route run, like, bro. I, I'm all in. I'm all in. First and first down and, and first down rounds per run. I don't care that Reek is 30, 31. I don't care that, oh, baby, I like your all. Oh, baby, I like your all. The man is, you know, the, the, the black Philip Rivers. Man's is gonna have a football team. But you know what? When you're getting paid, when you're gonna be a first ballot Hall of Famer, when you're winning us fantasy championships out here, 
where we can take the overall damn near every single one of your props on any given Sunday, Monday, Thursday. We get into December Saturdays. We get into playoffs. Bro, let's go. Let, let, let's go. This team is dangerous. Speed kills. Cheetah. Definitely a top five pick off the boards in, in your live drafts. If you're if you're going receiver first, I wouldn't even I I wouldn't even mind if someone was like, "Yo, I'm taking Tyreek Hill over Justin Jefferson." Yo, do you, do you, do you? Tyreek Hill gonna win you a championship, and you grab him in the first round. Two is gonna be there in the second, maybe even the third. So what's up? Teams equitable, teams fantasy football friendly. You know what keeps us team fantasy football friendly? Because they can still move it through the air. Jalen Waddle. Now, I know Jalen Waddle was not great last year. It's kind of hard <laughs> playing second fiddle to Tyreek Hill. All right. I get he finished his wide receiver 21 last year. Consensus PPR. As with his wide receiver 16 headed into the season. All right. Tyreek Hill was, was the star. All right. Oh, I'm a star. Sorry, never mind. I should have never even done the Rick Ross reference. Let me stop getting punched in the face. Look, Waddle was outside the top 50 wide receivers in deep targets, ranking 54th. Red zone looks 56th. All right. Again, Tyreek Hill and the running backs were eaten. Someone in this offense is going to suffer. Your, your question is just who, and you're just praying that it's not Jalen Waddle, right? Um, wide receiver 27 and expected fantasy points per game. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not sexy, like you know, but you always bet, you 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 always bet on talent, you know, and I think that look. If wide receiver, if Tyree Kill was the star of the show last season, and the running backs, you know, Raheem Mostert especially was as was as efficient uh, as efficient as he was last season. But Waddle, despite those metrics, still ended wide receiver twenty one. ADP has him as wide receiver sixteen. I'm not saying I'd pay up for a while when I when I start looking for a wide receiver too. But if I miss out on Tyreek, you know, like I want a piece of this offense. You have to get a piece of this Miami Dolphins offense. And if I'm grabbing J and if the piece that I grab is Waddle all by him lonesome, or maybe even if I get, you know, Tua earlier on, and because I, I missed out on Tyree Kill, and I wanted to screw over the Tyree Kill guy to make sure he couldn't stack, so then I grabbed Tua. Come back later and then grabbing Jalen Waddle, like it's it's still good, you know. And then even Jalen Waddle by himself as a wide receiver too, depending on how your roster is constructed, I still like it. If he can finish wide receiver sixteen, if he can finish as wide receiver twenty one, and be my two on my roster, I'm with it. I'm I'm, I'm with it. All right. So, you know, 15 yards per route run and six and four, you know, really quick. All right. Waddle did rank 15 in, in yards per route run and six in first downs per route run. So uh, things will be okay. Think things will be okay. Now on to the tight end. Johnu Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, is now the tight end for the Miami Dolphins. He is going tight end 26 per ADP, per consensus ADP. He finished as tight end 17 last year. I expect Janu, because of the way that this passing attack is designed, to definitely finish better than tight end 26. What I would do if I were you, if I'm in when I'm in the draft room. And then I'm really talking to, 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 to my late tight end homies. I'm sitting silent the whole time. 
Like, even if you get a Dalton Kincaid, a TJ Hawkinson, like, earlier in the draft, but, like, you're still like, yo, I need to make sure I build depth, like, for my tight end room. Like, John U. Smith is the perfect piece for that. John U. Smith is the perfect late round tight end candidate. I get that John U. Finish as tight end 17 with the fucking Falcons. But, like, Tight end one season incoming. There's only one ball in 60 minutes of football, baby. And it's got to go somewhere. And Tyreek ain't, ain't going to, you know, I don't think that Tyreek repeats last year. Like, I think that you get you get similar, you know, maybe like 1,600 yards, like maybe like, you know, a little shy. But, so, yeah, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. Jadu's going to be on that field every freaking snap. Like, the depth chart behind him isn't sexy. Durham Smythe, like, come on, dude. Come on. Nah, we're good. We're good. Uh, really quick, I do want to just say that this team does have some watch list players. Um, I want to make sure that I do highlight that this team does have a third running back. Um, it's going RB52. Right now, per ADP, and that is Jalen Wright. Okay. So, even should anything happen to one of the two, I want to make sure that I highlight that normally I would name this segment depth concerns. We're keeping this just watch list players. Um, also, Malik Washington, I do think that he'll get his share here and there. Um, and I guess even see him being, being you know, a, a return guy for them. So, if your league is doing the whole return points thing this year because of how the, the new um, special teams rules are, the new kickoff rules are, you know, Jalen Wright, Malik Washington, friendly guys for formats that, you know, utilize that scoring. Super friendly options if anything happens to the starters ahead of them. All right. So I want to make sure I keep that in mind. It sounds like Jeff Wilson Jr. is possibly not even going to fucking make the team if we're going to be honest. Um, and even if he does, then still super deep running back room that is just gonna be nasty. Like, like that, that is just gonna be nasty. Um, given that, cheers to me, cheers to you, all the wrong boys and girls want to do. Let's go ahead and grade this team. The fantasy friendly grade. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Share the content. The fantasy friendly grade for the Miami Dolphins is. Dog, oh, I'm giving them an A. I'm giving them an A. Mike McDaniel's like the way that, that, that he coaches his team and how fast and how high octane. Like, by the way, if you're Frank Smith, the offensive coordinator. For, you know, for the Dolphins, you got to have the most cush job ever because you're just learning from Mike McDaniels. Like, that's all you're doing. Like, you got the most cush job ever as an OC. Uh, I'm sure he definitely contributes to, you know, formulate the game plan and such, but still. Anyways, furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, Tua, Tyreek, Chan, Moster. Waddle, Janu, Jalen Wright, Malik Washington. This team is super fantasy football friendly. You just worry about them down the stretch. But hopefully they don't run into that issue this year. Miami, fucking make your damn off-season training camp somewhere where it's cold. Find ways to simulate cold weather. Make your practices during the season, somewhere cold. All right, or arrive to cold places earlier. That'll be your saving grace. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Run Boys, Robbie. We greatly, greatly appreciate you for tuning in to Fantasy Football Friendly. This has been the Miami Dolphins edition. Greatly appreciate y'all. Like, 
comment, subscribe, share the content. Cheers to me. Cheers to you. All the wrong boys and girls, what to do. Dilly dilly. Arr, happy Saturday, y'all. Let's get it. Training camp soon.